7-Eleven. Hi, this is um, Ken from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Yes, sir. I'm just calling to do the weekly customer survey. Do you have a customer in there that I could speak with? Yeah, okay. One second. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, it's just for a survey. we got to do one per shift. One per day. Okay. Okay. One second. You're doing the right thing. Okay. This isn't okay. stupid at all. Hi. Hi, this is Ken from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. Uh-huh. Hey. I'm, I'm cut. You're a customer? I'm a customer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yay. I'm so happy. <laughs> Listen, yeah. you've won the shopping spree. What? You've won a shopping spree. You get a free... Sh- you get to, like, steal food from there. Bas- it's no, like- I... No, no, listen, you get a free shopping spree for being the one millionth customer at that location. Oh, I actually, I, I, I am not from here, so I don't understand what you mean. Oh, no, you get free food. We're, we're going to give oh. you, we're going to give you free cigarettes and free food. Oh, I, I don't smoke. I'm sorry. Oh, you don't have don't to take need- the cigarettes. You can just take beer. Do you drink? No, for sure. Oh, God damn it. Do you like, um, Pepsi? What is it? Apples. We have apples. Uh, apple, yeah. You like apples? Uh-huh. Oh, yay. Hold on. Applause. <laughs> you get free apples. Uh-huh. Free apples. Do you see where the apples are? I can't. Like, I can bay. <laughs> you you can wait? Bay, bay, I mean. Um, do you, do you see where the apples are right now? Apple, apple, apple fruit, right? Apples or bananas? Banana, yeah, fruit. I can eat fruit. Oh, that's good. Um, do you see where the bananas are and the apples? Yeah, fruit, right? Yes. Do you see them? Do you see them in the store? Uh, no. I actually eat them. Like I buy them and, and eat them. Uh, eat them uh, outside or what? Do you like candy bars? Candy chocolates, yeah. Candy chocolates, yes. Uh-huh. Go go to the candy aisle and pick out a candy chocolate. It's free. Yeah. So what? You get uh, you get it for free. You're the winner. You win. Oh, I win. Why? Because, why? It's like, just like this. Yes, just like this. You win. The, <laughs> you win the candy chocolate. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we need you to go get a candy chocolate right now. Can you go pick up okay. one? And okay. Then, and then come back to the phone. Come back to the phone with a candy chocolate. Okay. Uh, I'm looking. Pick your uh, favorite candy chocolate. Okay. How about Snickers? I like Snickers. Oh, I fucking love Snickers. They're the best. Huh? Snickers. Plus. So what? Oh, um, can you open the Snickers and take a bite and tell me if you like it? So, it, why? Because it's, it's not... Are you the bullies or what? No, it's a survey. It's a survey. You get free Snickers and you have to take a uh-huh. bite and tell me if you like it. Okay. Just okay. A second. Take a bite of your Snickers, and I've got a uh-huh. Snicker. I've got a Snickers here. I'm gonna eat a Snickers too. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, so like, it's not gonna be in. I'm not gonna be in the trouble. Oh no, no, no! You get the Snickers for free, and I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna eat a Snickers while you eat a Snickers, and uh-huh. it's gonna be like we're having sex. What? It, it's we're gonna eat the Snickers together. Uh huh. Just eat the- So, what did you say? Another word? Uh, no, no, I didn't say another word. Just take a bite okay. of the Snickers, and I'm going to uh-huh. take a bite of my Snickers. Okay. And it'll be like, well, her- we're having a baby together. So, actually, I don't like this word to talk to me like this. I'm Wh- sorry about that. What? You don't like... I don't, I don't like this word. <laughs> oh, well, I'm calling from 7-Eleven corporate office. Yeah, that's good, but I mean, like... Yes, you respect me. Oh, no, I didn't say that. I think you misunderstood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. I didn't say anything bad. Okay. Can you so eat you it? want to eat it? Yes, yes. Eat, eat the entire... Okay, I'm going to try it. Okay. Hello? Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, is she eating the Snickers? Okay, why do you need to get the Snickers? Oh, it's I'm calling from the corporate office, and we're doing a yes. promotion, and she's the winner, and we need to make sure she likes the Snickers. Like, is she eating the Snickers? Yes, we eat Snickers, yes, now. Okay, yeah, is, is that customer, is she eating the Snickers? Can you tell her to eat the Snickers? 
Okay. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Did you take a bite of the Snickers? I did. Was it delicious? Mm-hmm. Do you think you're pregnant? Do you think, what? Do you think you're pregnant from the Snickers now? Because I, I ate a bite of my Snickers. Mm-hmm. And my Snickers de- was delicious. Was your Snickers delicious? Fine. Was it very good? So, actually, um, can you, like, I don't like this. Oh, listen. So, in my I'm sorry. in my country, you can talk another example. So, if you want. Oh, well, in my country, with my culture, listen. Yeah, my culture doesn't do that. So oh I'm Muslim, no, so no, like- no! We're not talking about your culture. We're talking about my culture. Uh, okay. In my culture, me and you, we are married now because we ate the Snickers mm-hmm. together on the phone. That's how we get married in my country. <laughs> me. <laughs> okay. Me and you. We're very intimate together now. Is it, is it a joke or what? <laughs> no, no, we don't joke in my culture, in my country. We, okay, we, we're now, not allowed. Okay, when I eat it, so what? We're not allowed to joke. Listen. Mm-hmm. I need to know if you're pregnant. What? I need to know if you're pregnant. Oh my god. Uh, are you joking or what? Oh no, so. I don't joke. We're not allowed to joke in my country. Okay, I'm not. You're not pregnant from the Snickers? Uh huh, no. Yes, you are? You said uh huh? No, I said no. Okay, no, I need to know if you're pregnant. Like, is it my baby or is it somebody else's baby? Oh, uh, okay, I think maybe you should talk to the. the no, I don't. The man? No, I, I don't. I, no, I don't want to talk to the man. I don't swing that way. I'm not. I'm so not. I I'm don't not, want. I don't. I'm not. What you're saying, and did, uh, so what exactly you want? Did you eat the entire Snickers? Did you eat all of what? the Snickers? What? Did you eat all of the Snickers bar? I did not. Oh, how much did you eat? A little bit. Oh, you need to eat all of it. No, I'm sorry, I don't e- want to. Eat all of the Snickers, so you're pregnant with my baby. Oh my god. <laughs> it's okay. So can you please? It's can all. I, no, it's. Can it, tell me what you want? Yeah, no, it's okay for you to eat the entire Snickers. And I'm going to be a good man, and I'm going to take care of you. I, so, I'm, I'm gonna who ta- are you? I'm sorry. I will ta- I'm calling from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. I'm going to take care of you and my baby. What baby? The, <laughs> you're, you're pregnant now with my Snickers baby. <laughs> me, oh, say, I can't understand you and what you're talking about. Me, me and you are married now. We're married. We're husband and wife. Okay, I have to go. I'm late now. It's you're late time for me to go. You're late. <laughs> that means you're pregnant. What? That means you're pregnant if you're late. I'm not. <laughs> okay, I'm not stupid and I am not young to be stupid. Don't understand. Okay. Okay, listen, you get that Snickers bar for free, okay? It's free. Okay. Okay, you can take it with you. You can eat the whole Snickers on the way home. So how do I know you are? Oh, uh, if you t- give me the give the phone back to the clerk, and uh-huh. I'll, I'll tell him that it's okay, and you can have that Snickers for free. Okay. And I'll I'll make it all right. Okay, I'll, bye. I'll explain to him that you are my wife and you're pregnant, and me and you are husband and wife. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Oh, uh, ma'am, ma'am, what's your name? Uh, why? Your name is why? No, why? Oh, it's for the survey, for the customer corporate office survey with 7-Eleven. What's your name? Um, Ningda. Ningda? Mm-hmm. Okay, I love you, Ningda. <laughs> okay. I, I love you, and I will see you when you get home. And I can't wait to meet our new baby. Okay, bye. I love you, Ningda. I'll talk to the clerk now. Okay, sit down. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is yes. Greg from the corporate office. I was just doing a survey with Ningda. Yes. And she ate a bit of a Snickers, and she does not have to pay for it. It's free. Okay. It, it's it's a free Snickers for doing the survey with us. Okay. Thank you. And tell Ningda that I love her very much. Yes. And tell her that she's pregnant. Huh? Tell her that she's pregnant. Say, Ningda, you are pregnant with the baby. I don't know. Why are you asking me so much a question? No, I'm not asking questions. I'm just letting you know. I don't know, sir. This is custom. I don't know what you've done. Yeah, it's a free Snickers. She doesn't have okay, to pay. Okay, free. Okay, free Snickers. Fine. Free, okay, free Snickers. You. Pregnant with baby. Okay, thank you. Pregnant. Pregnant. 
pre- okay. she's gonna have a baby in your store. My wife. Ask her if she wants to sit down. No, sir, I don't have that. Sir, I have to go. Sir, what's your okay. name? What's your name? What is your name? Hasim. Hasim. Yes. I need you to deliver the baby. Broadcasting from the PLA Situation Room in Roy, New Mexico. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Now it's time. Cactus. 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 Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus. 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 This cocksucker. Cactus. 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 You've got to be crap on my ball. Cactus. 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 This is going to be a fuck job to edit. Cactus. 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 Roy, the retarded boy. Cactus. 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 How about if I come down and punch your head off? Cactus. 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 You blowing smoke up my ass. Cactus. 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 You think a tracer can stop me? Why, hello there. This is RBCP. You're listening to the Snowplow Show for January 17th, 2017. And today's show is sponsored by the Naughty Guy. That's naughty as in K-N-O-T-T-Y. I I think that's your name. Anyway, the Naughty Guy. You were nice enough to support the show for a few months. And I did reply to your email, but your email server is down. So it's your fault. You didn't get the email. It's all your fault. It's not my fault. I replied to you. But thank you very much, Naughty Guy, for supporting this episode of the Snowplow Show. I hope you all enjoyed that extremely long prank at the beginning of today's show. That one was from back in 2013. And the only reason I'm playing that is because PLA's unofficial artist... Nick Caesar, he drew a picture of that prank call and tagged me in it on Facebook. So I think that's his way of ordering me around and telling me what to do, telling me what pranks to put in my show. There you go, Nick Caesar. I used that image on today's show, just like you commanded me to do. If you guys like the artwork in today's show, be sure to visit Nick Caesar at his website at scary-art.com. That's scaryart.com with a hyphen in the middle of it. Just put the hyphen anywhere you want, really. It'll work eventually. Thank you, Nick. I have some extremely important breaking news today, so I'm going to play the breaking news music. Breaking news, everyone. Betty White is apparently still alive today. In fact, she turned 95 today. She's 95 years old. Today is her birthday. And the article I was reading talked about how the entire internet just assumed she's dead. So, you see, it wasn't just me. I'm not just trying to be shitty uh, against Betty White. I really thought she was dead. It's not my fault. The entire internet thinks she's dead. And apparently there is a Twitter account at twitter.com slash isbettyalive. And I don't know if that's the official Betty White Twitter account. I'm going to guess that it's not because she only has 14 followers. But every post is just, yes, yes, January 7th, yes, January 8th, yes, January 16th, yes, January 17th, yes, it's my birthday. I'm going to follow this account right now so I know when she dies. Congratulations, Betty White, on still being alive. I'll put a link in the show notes to the article about Betty White being alive, because that's totally newsworthy. By the way, once again, just to clarify, we are talking about Betty White, the actress here. The Betty White that used to eat at that restaurant that we Facebook mobbed uh, a week ago. That Betty White is dead, I'm pretty sure. Unless that was just a hoax by the restaurant. I'm too lazy to go check on that, though. This morning on YouTube, I posted a new prank. It's the one where the old man was doing snow angels in someone else's yard, making a nuisance of himself. I've been going over to their yard. Oh, so you admit it then. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Okay. I I have no idea what you're talking about. I have never done anything like that. And one of the comments on that video today uh, gave me an idea, or um, basically he has the idea. I'm stealing it from him. And the user, his name is Helladope Sick Pranks. He says the neighbor on Pelican got their snow angel permit, so there's no reason for them not to just go down to City Hall and pay the $15 application fee. And I don't know where he was going with that, but I think all of you, all of the listeners, next year, or even this year, if it's snowing around you, you should go out and give me the addresses of people who have snowmen in their front yards. And I can call them as the city or something, and I can be, hey, what the hell, you don't have a permit for that snowman. Or I guess you could do snow angels as well. It just doesn't seem like those are going to be as easy to spot. But if you see a snowman out there, send me the address and and we're going to deal with this problem of people putting up unauthorized snowmen without a city permit. So thank you for that idea, Hella Dope Sick Pranks. I appreciate it. Don't be 
Get the lowest price ever at Radio Shack on the most powerful transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 when you sign up with Radio Shack's authorized cellular phone carrier. Go where you want to go. There's nothing else to buy, and it's ready to go wherever you go. Call when you want to call. Use in your car, or go portable and take it along. Radio Shack's complete transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 only at Radio Shack, the technology store. I have a submission here from Jeff. Uh, Jeff has sent in a lot of submissions before. You may remember him from such pranks as the sidewalk petition people, and I can't think of any others, but you know, it's generally stuff that has to do with uh, city zoning and building and stuff like that. And he sent me another one, and this one is an application for a sidewalk cafe permit. This guy named Thomas has paid $55 to open up a business in the in a downtown area. Looks like it's next to a BP and the application, it just kind of goes over all the important things of opening the business, like where the doorways are going to be, the width of the sidewalk, the location of trees and sidewalk benches and trash receptacles, and blah, blah, blah. Let's call it up and see if Thomas answers. Hello? Oh, he picked up and hung up. Hello, Thomas? Yes? Oh, hey, you kept hanging up on me. This is Dave from the city of... Yes. And uh, we just needed to ask a quick question about your sidewalk cafe. Yes. Is that going to have bathrooms? No, it ah, has no bathrooms. Well, right. It has inside, sure, if you want. But nobody sits down and you drive up in a car. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, you, you need to have restrooms in there because the people over at the BP next door, they want to be able to use the bathroom there. Uh, they do, huh? Yeah, because BP... Oh, they, you, and who is this again? Uh, my name is Dave from the city of... It's just that the BP next door, they want to get rid of their bathrooms so they have more space to sell stuff. So they're going to be using your bathroom. So you're going to have to have a, like an outdoor entrance for your bathroom. Hey, um, I don't know who's like you're pulling, but if you want to talk to me about something like that, that's, I don't even understand what you're mumbling about. Uh, no, I'm not mumbling with me and I'll work it out, but I don't know. We have nothing to do with their bathrooms at the BP and, uh, right. I don't know but, why we would, would ever have them, but you're going to cause, cause BP, why? all their customers are going to use your bathroom and I'm not mumbling. No, not. What part did I mumble on? Why would they use my, ba- my why, bathroom? Why are you saying I'm a mumbler? They got their own. Okay. But how come you said I'm a mumbler? You said I'm mumbling. I don't feel like I'm mumbling at all. Well, I, saying, I feel like I'm I was sorry. stating things I'm very my, clearly. I'm, Look, sir, I'm not in a mood to discuss these now. I'm willing to sit down and talk about it, but you uh, you got a phone number that doesn't even come up like a legitimate one. So I Oh, no, it's sure just one of those new phone numbers. It's it's 2017. You give, a, you give me a place where you're located. And I'll be, I'll this this is a real phone number, man. Look, area codes are a thing of the past, and our new phone numbers are all eight digits. Get with the times, Thomas. I'm sorry. If you want to discuss it with me and you're insulting me now, I'm saying you tell me. At least I didn't call you a mumbler. Where you want. What? I didn't call you a mumbler, at least. I know you didn't. Okay. So As long as we're clear on that. Look, this isn't a big deal. Just make sure you have an outdoor entrance for that bathroom for the BP customers. We don't have, you don't understand this, sir. Well, d- we just, don't have, this is an outside cafe, and there's no bathrooms. You have to come inside the building in order to use the bathrooms. We have no porta potties sitting yeah, out well, there for any reason. Yeah, it's well, a drive through Right, but the BP customers, they can come inside and use the bathroom. They could, why would they want to come in? They because never have in the past. BP is going to get rid of their, their own bathroom. BP is going to get rid of their bathroom so they have more space to sell chips and stuff. They're, they're, and they're not, we're not, why should we furnish them bathrooms to come inside? To be neighborly, our, just to be nice. To be nice. I'm sorry, we, our building isn't open all the time. We cannot do that. I don't. I will discuss it with the BP. Well, I, yeah. I really don't know what you, you're, if you want me something, write me a letter, then I'm, I'm at that point. You don't uh, make any sense I at all. I don't really like so, writing letters. That's why I'm making a phone call, but you're just freaking out no, at me for I'm no sorry, reason. Goodbye. You're sorry about what? That you won't provide bathrooms for customers? All right, he's gone. Thanks for the submission, Jeff. I think we succeeded on that one because he said he's going to go over to BP and talk to them about this whole thing. So that's pretty great. He's going to go over to BP and they're not going to have any idea what he's talking about. Mike wants me to call a girl named Alexis. 
He says, this girl leaves a note on the door of our locked apartment complex for FedEx. And the note says, if there's a package for Alexis and you can't get in, please call. And it has her phone number. And Mike gives me her address. Let's give Alexa a call. I mean, Alexis. Maybe I should ask her Alexa things. Like, Alexa, read me my emails. Alexa, tell me a joke that's offensive to Jews. Hello, Alexis? This is she. Hey, Alexis, um, this is uh, Steve Dave from FedEx. Okay. And I'm just calling to let you know that there are no packages for you today. Okay. Do you, they were looking for a package that I guess got dropped off at the wrong location. Are we talking about the same thing? Oh, no. well, probably. I don't know. I really don't know. All I'm saying is that I'm showing here in the computer that today you have no packages. We're, this is a new service we offer where we just call you every single day and let you know that, that you don't have any packages. Oh, okay. Can you take me off that list? Oh, no. We're going to call you every day and just let you, and that way you'll know. And then when you do have a package, uh, you won't get a call. And that way you'll know that a package is on the way. Oh, what the hell? She hung up. Let's call her back. It's like, hey, can't get to my phone right now. Please leave a message and I'll call you back later. Oh, well, she's not picking up now. I guess I messed that one up. I was going to talk to her about her broken package, but I couldn't resist just telling her that she didn't have any packages today. You know, I have to do that when I'm pretending to be FedEx. So thank you for the prank submission, Mike, and I'm sorry I messed it all up. I've called her several times now, though. She just won't pick up. Stinkmaster wants me to call a Radio Shack. Apparently, some Radio Shacks still exist. Stinkmaster says there's still a Radio Shack open in the mall I work in. You should give them a panicked call from the corporate office and tell them you forgot to give them the memo two years ago. And they were supposed to close down and they must cease working immediately. And they also owe you two back years of paychecks that you've clearly been accidentally giving them all this time. I think this is pretty much the best idea I've ever heard. So let's do it. Let's call this Radio Shack in Stinkmaster's Mall. Thanks for calling Radio Shack. This is Marsha. How may I help you? Hey, Marsha. This is Steve Dave from the corporate office with Radio Shack. Hi. Hi, uh, are you guys still open there? Yeah. Oh, you were supposed to close down like two years ago when when the rest of them did. How, how can you still uh, be? How can you still be uh, open? I'm here. Oh, are, is this the manager? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. You are you still getting paychecks from the corporate office? Yeah. Well, oh, General my. Wireless. Goodness. Yeah. We we. This must be a major glitch in accounting. Why? I don't know. I think you guys are going to have to send all those paychecks back from the last two years. I don't think and, so. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, you will, because because this is fraud. You you shouldn't even be open. I I can't be- um, I can't believe you guys. What what are you still doing there? Are you crazy? Have you talked to my regional manager? There's th- there shouldn't be a regional manager. We closed down everything. There's no more regional managers. Has was he your regional manager before two years ago? No. Okay, it's all starting to add up. It's making sense. He must be a scammer. He's going around pretending he's a regional manager and keeping Radio Shacks open. I've heard about this sort of thing. Oh, okay. Okay. (sighs) Can I get your phone number? What a mess. Yeah, it's on caller ID. So we're going to need you to shut down the store immediately. And um, do you have a ladder? I do. Okay, we're going to need you to take those big Radio Shack letters off the front of your building. How am I going to do that? With a ladder. I just told you. Well... And what was your name again? Uh, my name is Steve Dave from the corporate office with Radio Shack. I mean, even though Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore, we still have a corporate office. You know, we gotta, we're still finishing up everything and, and stuff. It, it makes total sense for us to still exist, but not you. Okay. So, okay, um, I can hold while you drag the ladder outside real quick and put it up on the front of the building. No, I'm gonna call my area manager and double check on. Well, this. I'm pretty sure he's a he's a scammer. He's he's a con artist. He's doing like a long con on everyone. I kind of doubt it. No, I think what's his name? Um, it's Brady. Uh, Br- oh, come on, that's a con artist name. Nobody in the world is named Brady. Well, don't know what to tell you. Yeah, well, you know, d- just be very suspicious of Brady from now on. Especially if he says Radio Shack still exists. Okay. Okay, great. Um, I'd like to say a prayer with you. (laughs) Holy shit, that noise she made. That sounded like uh, Mrs. Cotton when I killed her. 
Here, let's see if that works. Let me replay the sound that she made. Oof! Crazy people! Did it work? Was that an exact replica of Mrs. Cotton's death? Let me know in the comments, I guess. I, I have to come clean with you guys. Or, I guess, with Stinkmaster. Uh, I didn't call the Radio Shack that you gave me. I mean, I tried to. I did call them, and I talked to them. But they knew I was full of crap. You know, they were just playing along with it. They thought it was funny. But I thought it was a great idea. So I'm, I'm like, I'm going to do it to a bunch of other Radio Shacks. And I did, and they pretty much all had the same reaction. For some reason, when you tell a Radio Shack they should have been closed down two years ago, and they owe you two years of paychecks, they don't seem to believe you. But there was this one guy I talked to, and I wasn't even going to play it, but now I kind of think I am. But on this one, I had to abort at the very end because he he kind of sounded like he's about ready to cry or something. He said he can't lose his job now. And I wasn't going to play this one, but it's been long enough now. I feel like the wounds have healed. So here's the call that I did a couple calls before this one. Thank you for calling Radio Shack. This is Adam. How can I help you? Adam? Uh, hey, this is Greg from the corporate office with Radio Shack. What's going on? Uh, well, nothing much. Are, are you guys still open there? Yeah. Oh, you, you were supposed to close down about two years ago. How, how are you still in business? Um, I don't know. You, you were on that list? Like, you were supposed to close down with the rest of the country. I was? Y yeah, that store was. Oh. H how are you getting paid? Are they just, are, are they, are you still getting a paycheck from the corporate office? Um, I have no idea. Well, does it say Radio Shack on it? I would think so. Oh, this must, must be a major glitch in accounting. Because okay. you're not supposed to be getting paychecks. You should be closed down. Did a customer just come in? Yes. Okay, quick. Tell him to leave. Tell him to leave. We're shutting down. Are you... Is this a joke? Oh, no, no. You're supposed to be closed two years ago. This is, could be a major lawsuit. Holy holy cow. Um, I had no idea. Quick, stand up on the counter and announce to everyone. We are officially closed down. Please leave. Are you... Is this a prank call? Oh, no, it's not a prank call. And, and when you say it, make sure you point at any other employees and say this means you too. Um, okay. Uh, what's going on? Hello? Are, 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 well, are you doing it? Are you getting up on the counter and doing it? They officially closed down this radio sh shack. I feel like it should have been known about this. Oh, I know. Your your man this this is this is crazy. Your manager's has issues or something not closing down. Are, are you the manager? No. Okay. Well, just jump up on the counter real quick and make the announcement. I'll hold. Uh, I don't know if I should do that. Oh, no, it's okay. I give you permission. I'm the corporate office. I sign your paychecks. Um you do? Yep. I can't be out of a job right now. Oh, I'm just kidding with you. I'm not really the corporate office. I'm a prank caller. Oh, okay. So, yay! You get to keep your job. Congratulations. Okay. All right, bye. Oh, jeez. That was it. That was the call I was going to delete, but for some reason now I'm playing it, so you can all see what a horrible person I am. And I know I should have just kept going with it. I should have been like, well, you're going to lose your job. Let me give you the address to the unemployment office, because you're going to be real familiar with that place. And, and I could have told him that we're going to leave him a horrible review so he won't have a good job reference just because we don't like him. But no, I just told him it was a prank. But anyway, I want to do more of these because I love this idea. And I've probably called five of them now and none of them were really working out. So I don't know why I think this is going to work at all because people are going to know they're not supposed to be closed down. It's just the whole idea of it's hilarious. So we're going to try it once more or, or maybe a couple more times. See how it goes. Thank you for calling. Radio Shack, this is Sam. How can I help you? Hey, Sam. This hey, is Sam. Steve Dave from the corporate office with Radio Shack. And how can I help you today? Uh, well, I, I was just wondering why you're open still. You were supposed to close down about two years ago. We, we sent you the memo. Didn't you get the memo? I'm not sure if you're calling the right store or not. Oh, I'm, I'm calling the one that's the one there in the mall the, on the street. And can you provide me with your name again? Uh, Steve Dave. From the corporate office with Radio Shack? Steve Daves? Yep. Is that Days or Dave? Dave. Steve Dave. Okay. All right. I hate anyone with the last name of Dave. What was your employee number? Oh, I don't have to give you anything because you're not an employee, so you have no rights to ask me for things. Well, so, considering that we're still under Radio Shack, I 
need to verify who I'm talking to. Well, I, no, you're not under Radio Shack. You're supposed to be closed. You need to go home. That's not going to happen today, unfortunately. We're, we're not even sending out paychecks to that place. Like, how are you still there? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> he hung up. I think this prank's about over. Let's just try another place or two. See if they believe it. Thank you for calling Radio Shack. Savannah, how can I help you? Hey, Savannah, this is Steve Dave from the corporate office with Radio Shack. Mm-hmm. And what are you doing there? You're not supposed to be there. You are supposed to close down like two years ago. Didn't you get the memo? Mm, well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, you didn't hear the, the news? Like, did you, did you ever watch the news? You know, Radio Shack, they all closed down. Not all of them. Well, yeah, they did. Every single one in the entire United States. And well, I don't know why you're, why you're still there. You, you need to go home. I wish I could. <laughs> no, you. Can't. No, actually, I'm ordering you to. I'm with the corporate office, and you guys aren't allowed to be using our name like that. Radio. Oh, really? Sh- yeah, Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. Well, I don't know. So you're fired. Get the fuck. Fired. Yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> get out. I don't think so. <laughs> Do you have any customers in there currently? No. See? See? Why, why are you even open? There's never any customers in there. Awesome. Ow, don't hit touch tones at me. What the hell? <laughs> not cool. But we've had some customers today. Yeah, but it's not enough to keep you in business. So you need to just pretty much just go home right now. Wow. Oh. Radio Shack's officially closed. Radio Shack is officially closed? Yeah. Hey, tell that guy to shut the fuck up and stop eavesdropping. <laughs> well, see, now we have a customer. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I just need to do the customer survey, the weekly customer survey. Could I talk to that customer real quick? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, just let them know they get a free 9-volt battery. Okay. Hey, would you like to do the survey, please? Do it for what? For Radio Shack. Uh, how do I do one? Can I just hand you the phone? Uh, how long does it take? He wants to know how long it will take. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute? Yeah. Uh, I guess. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello? Hey there, this is Steve Dave from the corporate office with Radio Shack. Uh, how are you? Pretty good. Hey, we were going to do that survey, but I don't appreciate the way you're talking to my employees, so you need to just, just pack it up and get out of there. <laughs> just leave the store. Uh, uh, can I uh, pay my phone bill? Maybe I can get out of here. Uh, no, you may not. You can go somewhere else and pay your phone bill. But for now, you just get the fuck out. Oh, man. I'm serious. Turn around right now. Walk out. Okay. Hurry up. The, the store's All closed right. anyway. We're closing down forever. All right. was, was was that it? Uh, Well, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm not doing the survey with you because you're kind of a dick to our employees. All right. Okay. Um. And what's your name? I. I don't know. You don't know your name. No. Why don't you know your name? I don't know. You don't know why you don't know your name. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> um. Huh? Does Does he look unhappy, or does he look happy with the survey? Oh yeah. He's- He's fine. <laughs> okay, he, he's tough. He can take it. <laughs> he's laughing. Yep. All right, well, I guess I can let you go. Uh, just make sure you pack everything up and leave forever. Okay. All right, bye. <laughs> bye. I was hoping to hear what that guy was saying in the background, but I couldn't understand anything. The guy with no name. Radio Shack, this is Tom. Hey, Tom, hey, this Tom. is Steve Dave from the corporate office. Yes, sir. And I was just wondering, uh, you know, what the hell are you doing there? You're supposed to close down like two years ago. Didn't you get the memo? No, I didn't. I, they actually took me from a closing store and brought me here to oh. continue. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to be there. You need to go home. Oh, man. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're fired. I mean, the, the like every radio shack in the country closed down. You didn't hear about that? No, I did not. Well, you need to, you know, maybe spend a little more time on the internet. No. <laughs> keep up keep up on current events. I can't do that. Okay, well anyway, go home. Lock up the store. Huh? I, I said go home. Go
go home, lock up the store. Don't ever come back. You, you're not serious, right? Oh, yes, sir. I'm completely serious. I'm with the corporate office with Radio Shack. I'm calling to let uh, you know. I'm calling to let you know to get the fuck out. Who are you? My name is Steve Dave from the corporate office with Radio Shack. Steve, you're Steve Day? Steve Dave. It, it's you know that's my first name, Steve Dave. Steve Dave. Yeah, it's all one word though, no space. It's Steve Dave. Steve Dave. Yeah, look, I don't have time for this. Just get the fuck out of our store. From the corporate office. Yeah, the corporate one. Never heard of you. You've never heard of the corporate office? Who who's the head of that corporate office? I am. As far as I'm <laughs> concerned. No, you're not. <laughs> fuck all these other assholes around here. Oh my goodness. Anyway. What's up? What can I do for you? I'm just calling to let you know, get out of our store. Get lost. Take a hike. Can't do that, so... What's that beeping sound? You trying to send a fax or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm tracing this call. Oh, shit. I gotta go. I'm leaving. I'm, bye. Hanging up now. Click. All right. Took him a while. Took him like 20 seconds to finally slam down the phone like that. Shit, you guys, I don't want to get traced, so I think I'm going to stop doing these calls. Thanks, Stinkmaster, for sending in the idea and the number of a Radio Shack. I appreciate it, and I hope I don't actually get traced because of you, because then it'll be your fault. Oh, but wait, before we end this, um, let's call up that one Radio Shack. You remember the one I used to try and do a prayer with, and the lady was just a complete atheist and wouldn't let me pray with her? I haven't called her in about two years now, right? Let's, let's give her a call, see if she's had a change in religion. Thank you for calling Radio Shack. This is Jennifer. How can I help you? Hey, Jennifer. This is Steve Dave from the corporate office. Well, hello. How are you? Not too bad. I'm just calling to uh, say uh, a prayer with you. Really? So if you could bow your head. Okay. Bowing. Heavenly Father. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Heavenly okay, Father. Still bowing. Okay. 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 Everything's good. Are we all good? No, everything's good. Okay. Heavenly Father. Yes, I, I think we, we thank you today for, um, you know, our, our employee, Jennifer, and, and and the manager, whatever, I forget her name. And, um, Jennifer. Oh, this is, okay, yeah, so, whatever. I don't, you're a woman. Whatever. You're a woman, so oh, shut up. Sorry. Continue, please. Continue, okay. please. Um, please, please uh, keep, please, please uh, watch over Jennifer as her store closes down forever next week. And uh, help her in the coming days at, at finding a new job. In Jesus' what? name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, well, I'm, you don't have much of a choice because you were supposed to close down like two years ago. But um, yeah, we did not. You did not get the memo, apparently. And, I, I and we're, we're, still making, we're still making the money. Well, not for long because uh, we're closing down uh, next no, Thursday. It's coming Thursday. No. Okay, so uh, have a nice day. Really? Yeah, yeah, really. I really want you to have a nice day. I really want you to have a nice day as well. Okay. Praise Jesus. Thank you for the prayer. You have a good day. No problem. You too. Goodbye. Okay, bye. Good luck finding something new. I don't know if that's the same Radio Shack I used to call, because the person I talked to, I don't think her name was Jennifer, for one thing. And the lady I talked to, she was really grouchy, and she would just get really upset and say, Oh, I don't have to pray on company time. You can't make me do this. And the girl that submitted it, I remember which area she's from, and there's there were two Radio Shacks. I'm pretty sure that was the one I used to call. But then there's another Radio Shack like 30 miles away that's been closed down, so maybe it was that one. I don't know. But at least I got someone to pray with me today, and that was awesome. So thank you once again, Stinkmaster, for all of that. Oh, dear Brad, how's it going? Say, I was uh, using this uh, one-ply toilet paper the other day. You know that, that one-ply, thin, flimsy, crappy shit, whatever. Of course. Yeah, speaking of which, it kind of sure. tore and, you know, got, like, shit on my fingers. I wouldn't know, because I'm rich. Toilet handle, and somehow got some up my nose, and it's just really an unpleasant situation. And it Hate made that. me think of Carlito uh, being stuck in the bathroom. 
And uh, so, yeah, hey, that, that's a, that's an idea to revisit. Maybe rip off since you've been doing a lot of corporate favors. Maybe you can start doing customer favors. And, uh, you know, Walmart, Kmart, Target, something like that. I'm in the bathroom and I'm out of toilet paper. Could okay. you bring some and a dirty magazine, please? I don't know, Corbin guy. I've got a lot of other ideas to steal right now. I don't know if I'm going to have time to steal Carlitos. And if you guys don't know what he's talking about, Carlito likes to call up employees and claim that he's in the restroom and be like, hey, you're out of toilet paper, and while you're at it, bring me a magazine and, and stuff. Yeah, I should steal that, but I kind of like being the corporate office because that way I have authority over them and I can order them to do ridiculous things. You know, customers, they don't sign the paychecks. I sign the paychecks. Hello Brad, so, it's Stephen from the UK. Hey Stephen. I just wanted to tell everybody that they should definitely support you. Uh, according to Google Voice, your name is Stephen Ferroni, okay? That's what the transcript of this voicemail says, so that is forever your name from now on. Stephen Ferroni, okay. I should definitely support you on the Elite Cactus Squad. Hell yeah, I've emailed everyone you support me. a couple me. of times, and every time I've emailed you with a question, you've always answered. Like, I emailed you and said, what's oh, wait, this song? Are, are, you, are you being sarcastic now? An old hover-round video. Because I know I suck at answering emails. You got back to me straight away, and it was Paul Boy's Hotline. It's a great song, and if you're stuck for something to the end of this show, use that song definitely. No, it's Brad always answers everybody in the emails the best he can. I think it's brilliant. So everybody, get on Patreon and yep. support him. Send, right. send me Bye. lots of emails too while you're at it because I cactus, love cactus. love getting emails. Emails are the best. Now I appreciate the email. I, I just I think you've just gotten lucky with me answering the emails quickly because I know there's a bunch in there right now I have not answered yet. I'm working on it, but there's a few in there that's over a year old now. Hello, Brad. I had a question regarding one Mr. Kersley Jones. Uh oh. Now I heard you say he was uh, in prison. And if so, why and uh, when did he go and how long is he there? Okay, well, I don't remember when it happened. I think it was two or three years ago. And I can't remember the exact charges, but it had something to do with underage kids. I don't know if there was a physical contact or maybe if he was just looking at pictures on his computer. But he is definitely in prison right now for some sort of underage child activity thing because one listener sent me an article about the prison thing, another one sent me the, uh, you know, the prison records, you know, the public records on the website where you can see what he's in there for. And he could be out by now, I'm not really sure. I know he was in prison before, like a few years before this, and it was more of a Curtis Lee Jones type of thing you would expect. He was charged with operating a chop shop, I think they said in the, in the report. And he also had homemade weapons, and oddly enough, there were no computer hacking charges in there. Just the chop shop stuff and the homemade weapons. But now he's back in there because he loves kids just a little too much. Hey Brad, this is D-Prime. First time caller. D-Prime? Just want to say you're doing a good job on the show. Or D-Prime? And hope you have a good day. Cactus B Cactus. D-Prime? Anyway, thanks for the voicemail. Thanks for being a listener. Hi Brad. Hey, I'm just wondering, what's the name of this group that sings this cover version of Kanye's song? song? Oh yeah, that. Get up and wait. Okay, that's all I want to know. Thanks a lot. See you. All right. That cover of Stronger, that was done by a wacky afternoon DJ here in my area. And I used to listen to him occasionally when I was driving around in the afternoons. And he was actually fired for being a loose cannon and for, for causing problems around the station or something like that. And then a couple years later, the entire show disappeared because who listens to FM radio anymore? But anyway, the name of that DJ, his name was Tanner, I think. T-A-N-N-E-R. But I don't think you're going to find it on the internet because people have looked before and they say it's nowhere to be found. And I got that song off of Tanner's MySpace page. He didn't even have it set up to download, so I just had to play it on MySpace and record it as it played. And I'm sure by now the MySpace page is gone forever. And the song might be gone forever now because the FBI confiscated all of my stuff, and that's where the song was. Normally I would say to just email me and I'll send you the song. I'll send you the MP3. But I don't have it anymore, and I don't know if I'll ever get it back. I probably will, eventually, assuming the FBI doesn't wipe out my MP3 collection, since some of it may or may not allegedly be pirated. So I think the best way to get it right now is just to find me playing the entire song on one of my old shows and just copy it out of there. Hey Brad, quick news flash here. Morning. A, a serious no, I thought, related to your show. There's actually a, a video, a new video out, and it's of uh, a, a snowplow, which is why I uh, decided to alert you. 
quite okay. a cr- uh, tragedy. Yeah, snow tragedy. Plowing, driver fucking. But um, some uh, he was snow plowing some snow out of the uh, the snow and news uh, Some some douchebag asshole on a semi truck tried to pass him, and uh, you know behind the snow plow, it's uh, it's not so slippery and shit because he moved all the snow out of the way. But uh, mm-hmm. he passed him on the side, and it and it hit the motherfucker, and it knocked the snow plow <laughs> through a guardrail off a three hundred foot embankment. Oh, the shit. drivers and the uh, hospital with some serious injuries, but uh, breaking news. Safety warning out to all y'all, beautiful PLA listeners in the snowy areas. To yeah, especially the ones that drive snow plows. Be safe and don't be a bunch of douchebags. Watch out for semis uh, if you're a snow also, plow. Or uh, but the the snow plow show lives on. Yay! Even though that guy is practically right. dead. Also, I'm least. using my toaster to heat up my garage. Right, uh, right. Of course, who doesn't do that? I keep my toaster under the pillow all night. It keeps things nice and warm. But yeah, that sucks for the snowplow guy. Everyone, keep him in your prayers. If you call up Radio Shack and you do the prayer with an employee there, be sure to include the snowplow guy that got run off the road in a semi. Include him in your prayers because he's in the hospital and he needs it. Hey, Brad, I just finished listening to the show, and I really liked how you kept the lady on the phone to do your outro from the show, the <laughs> Petco lady, where you were like, okay, that's our show for today. Yeah, so if you yeah. do that, I was I... trying to get her to hang up, and she wouldn't hang up, so I just did the outro with her. I, I, I agree. I need to do that more often. Every week, I think it would be really funny if you get somebody who's going to play ball or not just hang up. Uh, you could, I don't know, just keep them on the phone for a really long time while you talk about voicemails and the FBI and all sorts of stuff. So, yep. Uh, yeah, hope to hear more of that. Okay, bye. I will try to do that. Brad, Brad. Uh, here we go. Brad, Brad. Oi, uh, Brad, I was wanting to mention that uh, I was checking some uh, well, G- GH YouTube channel. So this is the guy that told me I need to, whenever I talk to someone, and I always forget to do this, but he says I need to say, hey there, Nobby, how you getting along? So was it actually Naughty? Is this the Naughty guy that sponsors today's show? I kind of doubt it, but I guess it's a possibility. And YouTube channel seems to be gone like there's all the i think all the uh, pranks have been deleted and stuff what i was wondering if there's any way you could sort of get them back off i hope i hope Giad hasn't deleted them because they were quite good pranks like the oh, angry that site. yeah the calls of mass confusion pranks i'm sorry i was talking over you and i had no idea what you're talking about i thought you meant my channel but i think Giad deleted the calls of mass confusion youtube page because just like me he got busted last year for doing pranks some of you may have missed the show where he announced this but we were doing video pranks in a mall and the mall security figured it out and they 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 arrested him but now that that's kind of over with now you know it's all finished up he had to pay a small fine i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say that or not but oops i just did anyway but you know there was no real trouble or anything and i'm sure we'll see calls of mass confusion again soon eventually he might wait a year or two but we'll get all those pranks eventually we just have to be patient. Hey, Brad. This is the, this is that weirdo dude that called earlier. Hey, weirdo and dude. Made the War Games reference with Mr. Potato Head, Mr. Potato Head, Mr. Potato Head. Oh yeah. But um, I accidentally because this was, this happened during your hiatus for the holidays. And there was no. Oh, that no wasn't for the holidays. For like a couple of months, I guess. Yep. And, uh, what? And I was getting worried. What? So I called there the was never a mail. time when I went a couple months with no shows. I got raided by the FBI, and I was back in a week. I never take a month off. And I, and I said, Mr. Potato Head, Mr. Potato Head, where's the phone show? And I meant, oh my god, I meant, Mr. Potato Head, Mr. Potato Head, where's the Snowplow show? Oh, I, I, yeah. It's such a faux pas. Whatever. Didn't you I, I didn't even notice. I doubt I noticed. Maybe I show, noticed. Call it the phone show. Did you? Maybe you did. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Know there's PLR radio, and then, like, the call-in show, and I don't know. This, you've done you You've had many, many different permutations. Of, yep, uh, yep. It's, it's about time for me to quit this show and start up a new one. The most recent is the Snowplow Show, and of course I know that. I was just so excited being, uh, about being on the voicemail. <sighs> Fucking idiot. That I ac- accidentally said idiot. That, the phone show. That, that was terrible, and I, I just figured I, I, I should address it. And, yep. And make you understand. Thank you. This has been bugging me for show. all week. That's it. Okay, thanks for the voicemail, whoever you are. I don't know your name. You didn't leave a name. I'm just going to call you Mr. Potato Head. From now on, that's your name, Mr. Potato Head. And you brought up something that someone else has brought up recently. I can't remember where. I think it's an email that I haven't responded to yet. 
or maybe it was a comment. Anyway, I used to do a show. It was called The Phone Show, and I think it ran from 2009 to 2012, maybe. The show was not quite four years long, and I think a lot of listeners don't even know about The Snowplow Show. And somebody told me I need to start throwing those up on the feed, on the Snowplow Show feed, just randomly, you know, just random old shows, like occasionally I play random old Snowplow Shows. I should do that with the phone show, because those were good times. Uh, Originally, it wasn't even a prank show. It was just a call-in show. People would call in and talk about whatever they wanted. And then, of course, because it's me, it ended up turning into a prank show. But what I'm getting at, if you have not listened to the Snowplow show before, then you have about four years' worth of material, which is at least 200 hours of the phone show. So if you want to listen to some other old material that has me and a bunch of other random old PLA people, like Laugh Track Matt. Laugh Track Matt's in that show. So if you want to hear an old PLA show and you've never heard the phone show before, then you need to go do that because, damn it, it's the phone show. In fact, I really should be throwing at least one per month. You know, one phone show per month. The problem with that, though, is that I don't know which ones are good ones and which ones are bad ones because I didn't really do a whole lot of editing back then. I just released them however they turned out. What do you guys think? Should I release random episodes of the phone show on the feed, like one per month, so it'll take me ten years to do them all? Hey, Roy. Or, hey. or BCP or Brad, whatever you are today. Yeah. Um, this is Fish Taco. Uh, just calling to see how you're doing. You know, what's new? Uh, how how you know. are how are things? Anything hanging in there? Going on these days? Taking uh, one day at a time. You know, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, you know what's been up with you, except for the fact that you constantly tell us every single episode multiple times that you were raided by the fbi sorry and i just did it like 10 minutes ago didn't i oh my god i need to shut the fuck up about it okay brad we get it you got raided who gives a shit stop talking about it sorry sorry fish taco get over it and get a life you fucking asshole you, you dickhead wow okay well that seemed uncalled for all that name calling. Hello, Mr. Carter. This is Jackson, the manager at the Curl Up and Die Salon. Um, mm-hmm. I regret to inform you that your stylist, Stacy, well, the conditioner she used um, in your hair was infested with uh, oh, spider shit. eggs. This isn't as uncommon as you might think it is. It happens every now and again, and I'm fairly sorry, but I know exactly what we need to do. You're fairly sorry? Um, I just need you to get a jar of peanut butter shit. and spread that onto your hair I don't need this shit today, you guys. Let it sit for about five minutes, and everything will be just fine. All right. Uh, Mr. Great. Carter, I do apologize great, again. Great, if great. you have any problems or complaints, please give us a call. Just fucking great. Okay, you guys, i got to end the show now because apparently I've got stuff to do all of a sudden. I thought my whole afternoon was free, but apparently not. Thanks to the Curl Up and Die Salon again. So I guess thanks for listening, everybody. And thank you to the Naughty Guy. He's the sponsor of today's show. Before we get going, I want to play just a very short clip from earlier today where I jumped onto the Party Time show with Laugh Track Matt and Zax and Dark Stranger. And I got to do a quick prank call with them before they kicked me off of their show. They said my audio quality was too shitty, and then they made me leave. It it really sucked, and it was embarrassing, and it made me feel bad. But they put me on the phone with a Planet Fitness gym, and this is how it went. Thank you for holding. How may I help you? Hi, this is Steve from the corporate office with... Where is this again? (laughs) Planet Planet Fitness. That's it. Um, Yeah, we're just calling to test the lunk alarm. Is your lunk alarm working okay? Our lunk alarm, yes. Okay, can you try it out real quick? We just need to turn it on and make sure it works okay. Okay, no problem. Give me just one reset quick the system. I have to hear it on the We're phone, on. though. I think okay, you're no echoing problem. again. I am? Yeah, it does. Fuck! Okay. I don't know why I echo. <laughs> Were you able to hear that? Well, yeah, but it has to It has to be a full test. It has to go for the full one minute. Uh, otherwise... Okay, that's better. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it has to go for a full minute. Like, count to 60. Okay. Super slow. It has to be. It has to go on for a full minute. Count to sixty. All right. <laughs> they're, they're doing a test on the phone. No. It, t- tell him to shut the. Oh, f- that's a prank. No, no, it's not a prank. Tell that guy to shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> Get what are you guys, stupid. Get out of here. <laughs> You're stupid. You're the one doing it. That was my one minute of fame on today's Party Time show with Laugh Track Matt and Zax. If you want to find the full show, just look for the 
January 17th episode of Party Time with Laugh Track Matt and Zax and Dark Stranger. I guess you can find full episodes of the Party Time show on prankcallnation.com. They do a live show every week, usually on Monday or Tuesday, and it's a lot of fun, and they do lots of crazy, wacky things, so listen to that show on prankcallnation.com, as well as Carlito's show and Dwight's show, also found on that same website, and when you're done there, go to the Phone Losers of America website at phonelosers.org, and the Facebook at facebook.com slash phonelosers, and the Twitter at twitter.com slash phonelosers. You get the idea. Be sure to support the show with your monthly tithes at phonelosers.org slash cactus or patreon.com slash phone losers for just five dollars a month you get an extra show every week called the hobo sewed and i guess there are other perks but i'm not going to mention those because i've been slacking off lately thanks for listening everyone i'm brad carter and i was raided by the fbi a couple of months ago crap i did it again i mentioned it again i said i wasn't going to mention it again in the show and i did fucking shit okay i'm going to play a song now this is a song by Bone Cage that Giad sent to me today. I don't think he meant for me to play it on the show, but I'm going to do it anyway because I like the song. This is Riding High by Bone Cage. As we ride into the sunset And the wind catches our hair